What up, what up? Wimbush here. And today I'm excited to show you guys how we can take our content from Cinema 4D into Unreal Engine 5. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. So as you can see, I have Cinema 4D S24 open up right now. I have a scene that's already been pre-built from Pixel Labs. I'm using the Aurora pack, so shout out to Pixel Labs. And before I get started, make sure you use my affiliate link if you want to buy this pack here. It's this one right here, the Aurora pack. So if I scroll down, you can see it has a whole bunch of cool 3D scenes. Everything was built inside of Cinema 4D using Redshift and Octane. But as you can see from this still right here, this was actually taken from one of my tutorials that I used to pack in and I used it in Unreal Engine 4. And so all you have to do is replace out the different materials in there if you want to use it in Unreal Engine. And so let me show you exactly how we do that. So I'm back in my program here, Cinema 4D S24. And as you can see down here below, I'm using standard Cinema 4D materials. And that's because Unreal Engine doesn't recognize Octane, Redshift, Arnold, any of those third party render engines. It only understands the native Cinema 4D materials for now. And so all I did was I went through and replaced it with some really basic materials here. Like if I click on this one that's called blank, it's pretty much just like an off-white color. I have a reflectance channel in here at like 1% just to add a little bit of gloss. And then I have the same thing for this gray one right here. And then for these lights right here, if I double click on these, if I come over to luminance, it's basically just a luminance channel. And same thing for the blue one. It's a luminance channel, but it's with a blue hue. And then if I look over here inside of my objects panel, all these different cloners right here, these are all built with the instance mode on instance. And so that's very important. We don't want to use render instance or multi instance. You always want to use instance when you're bringing stuff over to Unreal Engine. So let's say that I'm happy with this scene right here. I have a really basic camera move. Let me hit play here. You see, it's just starting to ramp up a little bit. It's just moving through this corridor. Actually, let me redo this here. So I'm going to go up to animate. I'm going to select my camera. I'm going to click on this one right here. So it's just a linear move. So there's no ramp up and there's no slowdown at the end. It's just consistent all the way through the move. So basically, it's just going down the corridor. Nothing too crazy. So I'm going to go back over to layout, come over to startup. And then down here in the lower right hand corner where it says attributes, if you don't have this up, all you have to do is hit control D on your keyboard. And that should bring you to this tab here called project settings. But we want to click back on Cineware and I want to make sure I have everything check marked here. And for format where it says BMP, I usually use a PNG, but you can use anything that you want. But these materials are really basic. Basically, you only use these if you're using like if you're using any type of material maps for like your diffuse, your albedo, your reflectance channel, normal maps, things of that nature. But I'm not using any of that stuff here. So I'm just going to leave that go. And if you are as well, you want to change your resolution here. Like usually I just multiply it by four, make it 4K. But again, I'm not using any type of material maps, so I don't need to really worry about that there. And then from there, I'm going to come up to file, say project as, and then I'm just going to save it as a simple Cinema 4D file, which I already have it built here. It's called Sci-Fi Tunnel, and I'm just going to save over top of it. And that's basically it. So it's a really basic setup inside of Cinema 4D. Next, I'm going to open up Unreal Engine 5 and show you guys how we get started in there. So if you haven't already, you're going to want to download Unreal Engine 5, in which once you have your Epic Games launcher opened up here, you'll see that we have a new tab up here that says UE5. So I would just click on this right there. And then this is where you download the early access. And once you have everything installed in the upper right hand corner, this is where you would start up Unreal Engine 5. So you just click on that and I already have it launched actually. Let me open it up here. So once you actually launch it, it's gonna come up with the Unreal Project Browser, which we have a bunch of cool looking thumbnails over here that will give us all our different templates for games. I usually use the film video and live events. So I'm just gonna click on this one here. I'm gonna click on the blank slate and then I'm gonna come down here to project location and I'm just gonna save it in my folder that I already have selected. So I'm just gonna hit select folder and then for project name, I'm just going to name it tutorial. So the one thing with Unreal Engine 5, anytime you start a new project, it automatically has Lumen turned on by default. But as you can see here, it's given us the option to also turn on ray tracing. So I'm just going to turn it on and I'm going to hit create. So once you hit that ray tracing button, it's actually not going to override Lumen. It's only going to use ray tracing where it actually needs it. So it's to my understanding that ray tracing and Lumen actually work together cohesively. I'm not 100% sure how it works yet, but I'll be sure to let you guys know once I fully understand it. So now we have the brand new Unreal Engine 5 opened up down here. We still get this thing that says project file out of date. I'm just going to hit update on there. 
And then from here, you can see we have a different layout up top. We don't have like the plugins button or anything like we used to on Unreal Engine 4. So I'm gonna show you two places where we can actually find the plugins so that we can activate the Datasmith plugin. So over here in the upper right hand corner under settings, I'm gonna click on this. And then down here, you'll see plugins right here where it says game specific settings It's right here. So you can actually click on it there. Or if you come over to edit, it's actually under configurations over here. So those are the two places that I was able to find it. I know it's kind of hidden away. They're trying to make the interface a lot more cleaner. So you're going to have to dig into these menus to find the stuff that was previously there. So I'm just going to hit plugins right here. And then we're under the search. I'm going to hit C4D. And this, is, this should look very familiar if you followed my channel before. This is exactly how everything worked before. So I'm going to click enable. It's going to tell you that the Datasmith importer is still in beta version, which is fine. I'm just going to click yes. And it's going to ask us to restart. I'm just going to restart it. It should only take a few moments here to restart. And everything is restarted there. So I'm actually going to close this out now. So just searching around in the upper bar here, you'll notice that we don't have it activated here still. In Unreal Engine 4, usually the Datasmith plugin button would be right there, but we don't see it here. And to find it, we actually have to come over to content and then we have to come to import assets and click on Datasmith. So again, I think they're doing it this way just to kind of keep everything clean up top here, which is totally fine. Once you understand where everything's at, we should be good to go. And so I'm going to look inside of here from a Cinema 4D project. So I'm going to click on C4D, Sci-Fi Tunnel, click Open. The same as always, you're going to click on your content folder, click OK. And I'm just going to leave everything checked marked here to import everything. Click on Import. And that was quick. That, that, there we go. We have everything inside of our scene here. Quick and easy. And you can see our content folder down here is actually brought up already. I'm going to click on this just to make it a little bit cleaner and also tell you guys the shortcut to pull that up. So if I have something selected inside of my scene here, if I hit control spacebar, it's going to actually bring up the content browser down here in the lower portion of the screen, which is a cool shortcut. And as you can see, everything is kind of blown out right now. Like we have everything in here, but let's go and drop like a, a post price volume in here. And this will also let me show you where that's located as well. So I'm actually going to, before I do that, I'm going to delete some stuff that I have in here. So I'm going to scroll all the way up to the top, fold this in, and then I'm going to get rid of the floor, the atmospheric fog, the player start. Um, I guess I could get rid of sky sphere. No, let me leave that in there for now. I'm actually going to get rid of, let me see, I think actually I'll, I'll leave everything else in here. Maybe even a light source. And I'm going to click yes. And there we go. So I'm just minimizing it. And then I'm going to come over here to create. And I'm going to come down here to visual effects. And this is where we're going to find like our post process volume and our exponential height fog. All the stuff that we're used to having in the actors over there is all listed under here now. So all I'm going to do is click on post process volume. And you see that we have our post process volume cube up here. So I'm going to make sure I have it selected. Come over to my details panel, type in UNB. And that's going to bring up, let me pull this out a little bit so we can see it better. That's going to bring up this little attribute here called infinite extent unbound. So I'm going to click on that. And basically that means that everything that I'm doing in here now is going to engulf our entire scene. So all these different attributes that I'm about to click on, it's going to affect everything. So method intensity, let me do convolution. You can see that we're getting like a cool glow in here. I'm going to scroll down a little bit more down under exposure. I'm going to turn on the metering mode, put this on auto exposure basic, and then for my compensation, maybe bring that down to zero, somewhere around there. And then down here under min EV100 and max EV100, I'm going to switch these both to one. And this should give us a little bit of a better lighting situation. And so that's going to allow me to show you where we can find these materials for our lights and everything, our emissive lights, and we can actually change these to give it a better glow. So I'm going to hold down control, hit space bar, and that's going to bring up our content browser. So I'm going to come over here to materials. I'm going to find, let's say the white light first. Let me drag this out here. And then I'm going to come down here under emissive. I'm just going to turn this up to like maybe 20. That's giving us a pretty cool lighting pattern down here. Maybe let's try 25, something like that. Then I'm going to do the same thing for the blue one. So I'm going to click on these blue lights. Maybe let's make these 10. Yeah, let's try 20 for there too. 
so it's kind of blowing it out you can't really see the b hue but that should be good there just for our example here then we're going to come back over to post process volume maybe come down to where we have lens flare let me click on the bokeh size here i'm just going to smooth this out a little bit i like it when it's really blurry somewhere around there and then i think that should be good there so let me actually hit control spacebar again and i'm going to come over to animation and i'm going to double click on this which will bring up our sequencer so now we have our sequencer down here in the bottom and i already have it i guess it's already clicked into place because this is how i had it before but usually it's just going to be floating so whenever you click on sequencer it's going to be a floating window just like this and so if you just grab it and then drag it all the way down here to the bottom and that's how i was able to get it down there like that so i'm going to click on the camera here and then i'm just going to click on the play button and there we go so we have our animation in here you can see that we're getting a little bit of funkiness with the shadows and everything in there it's just going to take some playing with the attributes probably in the post press volume to get this all right but this is just basically a basic setup just showing you how we could bring our stuff from cinema 40 into unreal engine 5. so hopefully this helped you guys out i know a lot of you guys been asking me how do i get my cinema 40 projects into unreal 5 because a lot of stuff was hidden so hopefully this is a kickstart to get you guys back into unreal engine 5 with your c4d projects if this did help you out make sure you give me a big thumbs up subscribe to the channel if you're brand new leave me a comment down below i'd love to hear from you guys again since i've been away for a while and until next time stay fresh keep creating and i'll catch you guys in the next video i see you soon take care what up what up Wimbush here